salts are chemicals that could be acidic, they could be basic, or they could be neutral. So in order to understand salts, you have to understand all of the previous types of chemicals, strong acids, weak acids, strong bases, weak bases, and so on. And the key is, once you recognize that you're dealing with the salt, is you have to first dissociate that salt, just like you did last semester. And that means you form the cations and anions that make up the salt. So if the ionic compound dissolves in water, it also dissociates. It might be helpful to review the polyatomic ions so that you can recognize salts easier. Once you have the salt dissociated, you have to check the cation and the anion separately. So first we'll go through the rules for checking the cation. If the cation that comes from the salt is from group 1 or group 2, group 1 and group 2 cations do not react with water. A reaction with water is called hydrolysis. So group 1 or group 2 cations do not hydrolyze. They don't break down the water. If they don't break down the water, that means they don't react with the water, they float around in the water, but they keep the water neutral, pH neutral. If you have any other metal on the periodic table, and for this class we're not going to go into the exceptions, if you find any other metal, for example a transition metal like iron, those metal cations make the water acidic. They cause the water to produce more hydronium. You have to know that a metal like this makes the water acidic, but we're not going to do the pH calculation, so we won't do an ice chart for that type. The type where you will have to do an ice chart for is when you have a polyatomic cation. A polyatomic cation, to find out what kind of reaction it undergoes with water, you have to first figure out what is its conjugate base. So for example, NH4+, the ammonium cation. If you're looking for the conjugate base, you can find that by mentally subtracting an H+, and you get NH3. NH3 has a KB. NH3 is a weak base. Remember, it's a nitrogen that has a lone pair on there. NH4 plus has no lone pair on the nitrogen because all four bonds are taken up by hydrogen and there's no room for a lone pair on the ammonium cation. Well, if NH3 is a weak base and that's its conjugate, that means NH4 plus must be an acid and it's not one of the six strong ones. So if you have a cation, NH4 plus, that's going to make the water acidic. Anytime you have a cation that's the conjugate of a weak base, that cation will turn the water acidic. For the anions, you never check the periodic table. Unlike the cations where the first thing to do was to look on the periodic table, there's only one check you do with anions, and that's to find the conjugate acid. So for example, if the anion is fluoride, if you mentally add an H plus to fluoride, you make HF, hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, not a strong acid, so F minus is its conjugate. This will be a base, and it's not a group one or group two paired up with OH minus, Therefore, it is a weak base. So if you had fluoride in water, it will turn the water basic because it acts as a base. It accepts a proton, and you make more hydroxide that turns the water basic. However, if you have an anion like nitrate, and you go through the same check, when you find the conjugate, you get nitric acid, which is a strong acid. So if you thought that nitrate should act as a base, let's write out the reaction. We're going to make HNO3 and OH-. This looks like it should be making the water basic because we're making hydroxide, 
But remember, nitric acid is a strong acid. That strong acid reacts 100%. So instead of this reaction being in equilibrium, this reaction is going to turn around and reform the starting nitrate and water. So the net result, NO3- minus is the conjugate of a strong acid. And the conjugate of a strong acid is not a base. It is neutral. This is very important to remember.